NASA claims it has lost the telemetry of Apollo. Oh how convenient, NASA, how can you lose something that you never had? This simplified schema gives an idea of the way that the telemetry of Apollo was working. All the data were transmitted in numeric form. So the data which were not already numeric analog had to be converted into numeric. With circuits which are called analog to digital converter, ADC, on the schema. And which allowed to convert an analog data that is continuously varying into a numeric value composed with bits. Then the data of the instrumentation system, all in numeric form, were arriving to a digital multiplexer. A multiplexer is a device which allows to select one out of several data at a time. So the numeric data were successively selected by the digital multiplexer to be successively transmitted by the telemetry. Each time a numeric data had been selected by the multiplexer, it was transmitted by serializing the bits. In order to do that, the selected data is first loaded into what is called a shift register, and then the bits of this shift register are shifted one by one to modulate a carrier, the same way that the voice modulates a carrier to be transported. This animation shows how the selected numeric data was loaded into the shift register and then shift it bit by bit to come modulate a carrier allowing to transmit it. So the numeric data were successively selected by the multiplexer, and each time that a numeric data was selected, it was loaded into the shift register, and all its bits shifted to come modulate, the carrier allowing to transmit them. The next numeric data was not selected before all the bits of the currently selected data had been shifted and transmitted. Half amplitude bits were used for the synchronization. The various signals were then modulating a high frequency carrier, they have different frequencies, so that they can separate it at the reception. The frequency modulation was used, for it allows a better quality than the amplitude modulation and allows to preserve the integrity of the transmitted signal. In a frequency modulator, the incoming low frequency signal comes modulate the frequency of a high frequency oscillator. But this oscillator does not have a perfectly stable frequency, and, if its frequency was not stabilized, it would degrade the quality of the transmitted signal. So what is done to stabilize this frequency? The output of the frequency modulator is looped back into a loop which is called phase lock loop abbreviated PLL. It is first divided so that the resulting frequency corresponds to the one of a crystal oscillator of which the property is to have an extremely stable frequency. Then the signals coming from the modulator's output and from the crystal oscillator are mixed, and the mixer's output is re-injected into the frequency modulator to stabilize the frequency of the master oscillator. The goal of this loop is to eliminate any noise of which the frequency is below the frequency of the crystal oscillator, as the crystal oscillator has a frequency which is much higher than the one of the signal to transmit. It guarantees that this signal will not be polluted by any noise and will be integrally preserved. The frequency modulated signal was then transported by a very high frequency wave beyond the gigahertz which is called UHF so it was able to reach the Earth. At reception on the Earth the subcarriers were extracted from the main carrier by frequency separation, and each subcarrier was demodulated to obtain the signal it contains. So let's now see in detail how this telemetry was working. This is the schema which is proposed for the analog to digital converter. The device which allows to convert an analog data into a numeric data in the handbook of the Lunar module. This animation illustrates how this converter works on a simplified 4 bits converter. At the end of the conversion, the converted output appears on the outputs of the flip-flops. 
Globally, the schema proposed by NASA contains all the elements of a conventional analog to digital converter. The flip flops which output the result of the conversion appear at the bottom of the NASA schema. But does this schema really work? The first fatal error is that the analog input convert and the output of the resistor network are directly connected together. In reality they should be connected as two separate inputs to the differentiator which allows to compare them. The fact that they are directly connected together makes that this converter cannot work, even if there were not other errors. And there are other errors. The second fatal error is that the outputs of the converter are indicated as the outputs of the timing generator. In reality the outputs of the converter are the outputs of the flip-flops which are on the bottom of the schema. The outputs of the timing generator are all zeros at the end of the conversion. Even if the analog input and the output of the resistor network had been correctly connected to the differentiator, the converter would not have provided the converted value. Then there is a resistor which has been added to the resistor network and which in fact has no reason to exist. If there had not been the two previous errors, the converter would not have correctly worked with this added resistor. Furthermore they have added fantasy circuits which don't exist in a normal converter. So with the schema they propose, no chance that the analog data could be correctly converted. But can the data which already is in numeric form be transmitted? This is the schema they propose for the digital multiplexer which allows to select numeric data among several ones. Would there be a problem with this multiplexer? This is the schema of the first stage of the multiplexer. When its command word is set, the first numeric data can pass on the output of the multiplexer. When its command word is not set, the first numeric data cannot pass, for it is blocked by the entry diodes. The entry diodes, circled, are very important, for, if they were absent, the numeric data could pass even when its corresponding command word is not set. And what do they do? After having shown on the first stage how the stages of the multiplexer had to work, they remove the entry diodes on all the other stages so that their numeric data can pass even when their corresponding command word is not set. This is the way the multiplexer should have appeared, with the entry diodes on all the stages of the multiplexer not only on the first one. With the missing entry diodes, the multiplexer is no more a multiplexer, it becomes a mixer which outputs an incoherent data. This is the schema of the ship register which allows to successively shift the bit of the currently selected numeric data in order to be transmitted by modulating a sine wave. Would there be a problem with this shift register? Of course there is. Before being shifted, the bit of the selected numeric data must be loaded into the shift register. And that's precisely the problem. There is no load command to load the bit of the selected numeric data into the shift register. And if the bit of the selected numeric data are not loaded into the shift register, it's not its bit which will be shifted and transmitted but zeros instead. So it is difficult to imagine how the telemetry of the instrumentation system could work if all its elements show intentional inexcusable errors. And this telemetry contains other elements which also contain intentional errors, but that it is useless to describe in this video. About the frequency modulator which allows to transmit various signals like the voice, the video signal and the biomedical data, this is the way that it should have appeared. The 76 MHz has 76,000 kHz. Output of the frequency modulator is divided by 16, so that the resulting frequency matches with the frequency of the crystal oscillator, 4.7 MHz. 
The output of the mixer of the PLL has a frequency of 4.7 MHz, which guarantees that any noise which has a frequency under 4.7 MHz, 4700 kHz will not pollute the transmitted signal. All the signals to be transmitted have a frequency much below this frequency. The video signal has a frequency of 500 kHz, and the biomedical data has a frequency of 14.5 kHz. And what do they do? Instead of doing things normally they divide the branch coming from the modulator's output by successively 4 and 2048, giving a total division of 8192, and the branch coming from the crystal oscillator by 512 which makes that signals with a frequency of 9.2 kHz arrive on each input of the phase modulator. And what does it mean? It means that only the noises which have a frequency below 9.2 kHz will be eliminated. The noises which have a frequency over 9.2 kHz will persist. And the video signal 500 kHz, and the biomedical data 14.5 kHz both have a frequency over 9.2 kHz. It means that these signals will be polluted by noise, which would not have been the case if the frequency modulator had been correctly mounted. So the engineers could not even correctly mount the frequency modulator. Of course it was absolutely intentional, for the engineers are not so dumb that they could not have mounted it correctly. It appears very clear that the engineers have entirely sabotaged the telemetry so to be sure that it would not work. But why would have they made a working telemetry for a lunar module which would never leave the Earth? NASA claimed to have lost the technology to send a lunar module on the moon. Oh really how is it possible to lose this so fantastic technology? Are there any examples of an outstanding technology which has been lost? Some people who absolutely want to justify the loss of this admirable technology cite the example of the pyramids that we would no more be able to build. In reality the truth is rather that there would no more be available slaves to do the tremendous work for building these pyramids. They also cite the example of the Concorde of which the technology would have been lost. But the technology of the Concorde has not been lost at all. It has been stopped after its tragic accident, and also for other considerations, like fuel consumption and noise. The plans of the Concorde are not lost, it still could be built. But why build a plane which would not be allowed to fly? In fact the only technology of Apollo which has not been lost is the one of the Saturn rocket. NASA still could build Saturn rockets but Saturn rockets cannot go beyond close Earth orbit. They cannot go to the moon. The truth is that, unlike the technology of the Saturn rocket, which is okay, the technology of the lunar module has never really existed. The technical documentation shows that there is no way that it could work. Anybody who believes that the photos of Apollo have really been made on the moon is seriously deluded. But trying to say it to someone who believes that the photos of Apollo are genuine is a very painful revelation that he is unable to stomach.